Hi everyone, welcome to the Forge Tech Help Show. Hopefully, hopefully we're live. Um, first time, this is our test pilot for this, so bear with me. You're, but we're coming live from Castle Grayskull. Um, and if you know Castle Grayskull, it's from He-Man. So obviously this is Forge Tech Help, and this is the Forge Tech Help Show. Uh, this is the show where I talk about everything business technology, home technology, digital marketing news. The whole gambit. Every, everything is going to be fun. Just watch me talk to myself. Talk to you. It's really great. Hopefully we're we're uh, live right now. So if anyone could uh, throw down some comments, let me know how we're doing. Uh, this is the first time. So good feedback on lighting, video bit, bit rate, uh, quality, how everything's going. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for your comment and your donation. Um, let me know if you have any tech questions. We'll try to cover it later on in the show. So, uh, so a little bit about me. I'm Ford Henley, owner of Ford's Tech Help. I have a background in a lot of digital marketing, um, computer repair. Uh, so I have background, uh, first of all, I have a degree in business and marketing and a master's in internet marketing, but I've worked various jobs doing tech support, um, being a front, I was a front end web developer. So I kind of come across all different things and I just have a love for technology and finding random things. So if you want to find random things about technology, let me know. All right. So let's get started. So the way we'll do the show, we're going to break it down into home tech news first, business tech, and then we're going to take a little break because uh, it's still learning to get the camera to stay on for the whole time. Uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to get into some digital marketing, some books I like. And as things progress uh, and we get more followers, we're going to go into questions that you have contributed. All right, so here we go. So first up, we've got... Tech news, breaking news, and just a little disclaimer: I am a uh, stakeholder, uh, shareholder in ProctorU, so I just. But they did announce it publicly yesterday, so I can't talk about it. So ProctorU and Yardstick, um, they have merged together to create one behemoth testing company called Measure Learning, and this story comes from Campus Technology. It's really exciting website if you want to learn about campus technology. I guess if you work at a school, I think, uh, Rachel, you work at a school, um, you'll learn about their technology. But ProctorU is an online proctoring service that I worked at a long time ago now when they first got started out of Andrew Jackson University. They have grown a lot and progressed a lot, and it was just exciting to share this news and kind of show what they've been doing and They've merged with this uh, larger company, Yardstick, out of Canada. So I will have the links to all these articles later if you would like to read them in more in depth. And then another breaking news, uh, of course, it comes from, ironically, the NSA, which I was like, when I read this headline, Windows 10 is a security flaw, so severe, the NSA dis disclosed it, which means, you know, obviously the, the NSA is uh, always tracking us. But um, so the one, so when it's in a security flaw so severe that the NSA disclosed it. Um, not going as super in depth, boring everybody about this. I totally read this later, but basically, just letting you know to make sure you go in and update your Windows 10. First, do a backup. You know, um, definitely back up your computer before ever doing an update so that you can restore it in case there's issues. Um, but there, I believe there's a link inside this article to step-by-step -step on how to patch that. So, and home tech news. Not a whole, whole lot in the home tech news outside of the big ring doorbell controversy, which uh, 
happened a little while ago, so I won't really cover it. But I, if you want to learn more about it, definitely Google that. So the big thing this week was Microsoft ending support for Windows 7. So if you have um, probably a grandfather who never gets a new computer or somebody who just refuses to learn new technology uh, and they're still running Windows 7, you can still upgrade for free. So definitely go into this article and find the links on how to still upgrade for free. There are many, many ways to do the upgrade, but they officially ended support, so that's going to leave a lot of security flaws available. And so it's going to be it'll probably be a big advancement in uh, ransomware attacks. And ransomware is where somebody tries to take over your computer because you clicked on a, a link that wasn't secure from like fedex.gov um, to track some shipping thing that you didn't even order. Um, so definitely make sure you're paying attention to the links you click on. And so that's why I'm talking about this because I'm worried about the older generation who don't pay attention to the links that they get in their emails or PDFs and they'll get ransomware attacks. And because Windows 7 is not supported, there's going to be a lot of security flaws that won't let you be able to uh, avoid those kind of situations. So definitely upgrade. Um, you can upgrade. I would recommend, though, just getting a new computer because if you have Windows 7 and it's not like a business class computer, um, you're going to want to get a new computer because... Um, upgrading an old computer to Windows 10 is going to probably make your computer pretty slow. It's going to do a lot of cool things, but it's going to be slow. So definitely look into maybe getting a new computer. And if and if you have any questions about some computers, definitely uh, send me a message on the main Tech Help Show website, and I can try to re recommend something to you. And this kind of also goes into business tech because... They do still offer support if you're a business customer, but you have to pay them for support. So there's no more free support. All right, next up, we've got Tesla. If you've never heard of Tesla, it is not Nikola Tesla, the creator of the Tesla coil and many other things that I can't think of. <laughs> um, but... Tesla, the electric car company, they also have uh, home batteries, solar power. Um, they're now worth more than Ford and GM combined. But, and you and you think about it like, oh, they don't really sell that many cars, but their cars are expensive. Um, everything they sell is kind of expensive. But also they, they sell more than just cars. Like I said, they do solar power, um, battery backups for your house as well so um it's just cool seeing like new companies take over and elon musk that 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 guy that runs that thing if you haven't seen their cyber truck uh video where they they have a new electric truck and it looks like it's from a video game people are actually pre-ordering it i don't know why but there's a they should kind of show that it's like basically bulletproof and they throw like like a like a bocce ball or just a metal big ball at it and completely shatters the window. And I just thought that was hilarious. So if you need a good laugh and you're you're worried about feeling awkward and so about something today, watch that video and just know that he did that in front of thousands of people and a live stream. So can't get worse than that. So next up we got business tech. So from Google's own blog, they are going to help local businesses showcase products online with Pointy. And basically, this doesn't have the, the photo of it, but basically Pointy, it's like a little, it looks like a little walkie-talkie. And basically they put it next to the product, 
products in the store and it, it's able to list it online and tell you like the quantity that's in the store. So it's very interesting. The uh, technology is just going crazy, which is great because you think um, every business is kind of moving towards marketing online, digital marketing, uh, brick and mortar stores are dying and no one wants to do retail, but there's sort of like a resurging of it with like the more like hipster stores. Um, but there's, there's ways to still have a brick and mortar store and also be tech savvy at the same time. So definitely keep on that. If you have more of like a retail shop that actually sells products over services, um, Google is though it is being acquired from Google. So who knows what else it will track. Uh, And from Adweek, we've got Instagram begins testing the ability to send direct messages on the web. Yes, I'm just reading headlines directly. Um, So basically, they're expanding their their direct messages to kind of what it seems like to be more like Facebook Messenger, which is interesting, but also a little annoying because Instagram and Facebook, or Instagram is owned by Facebook. It's a Facebook company. Um you think it could just already work with Facebook. <laughs> and it does a little bit. Um, you can reply to comments and stuff through your Facebook page. But I I just kind of wish it was more seamless, like reposting things is really annoying, but I'm not going that rabbit hole. Um, but it's, it's just, they're doing a lot more with Instagram for businesses. Um but obviously, we have new tools like TikTok and Snapchat, and it all depends on who you're trying to target. And we can get into more of that in the digital marketing, but um, just it's just a new way to communicate with your customers, and it's it's definitely something that you always want to keep in touch with, so that you're always in touch with your customers. And search engine land. So if you want to learn about a lot of things search engine go to search engine land there's also marketing land they might have um hospitality land i don't know um but yelp is cracking down on review rings as google continues to see widespread map spam so looks like there's getting a lot of fake listings and reviews i uh, and i don't really like yelp anymore anyway because it's usually only negative people or somebody's grandmother that reviews things like it's not really trust trustworthy anymore and I don't think a lot of people are really searching on Yelp anymore because you can just search on Google and get a Google business listing come up and get more accurate reviews because Google basically if you go to a business that's listed on Google my business and you buy something there they they were able to like geolocate that you're at that store. It's not always accurate. Um and then they'll send you uh like a push notification to like your email or something and ask for a review pretty much instantly. So they're they're usually a lot more trusted cuz they cuz they verified that you've actually been there versus like just a competitor doing a negative review. Uh-huh. Let's see. All right. Well, this went a little bit faster than expected, but I'm just going to take a little quick break. I'm going to take a little sip of my trusty bang. Not not a sponsor. Maybe one day. Um, and just get everything set up for the next half where we got digital marketing, books I like, and tech I like. So stay tuned.
All right, everybody. Welcome back. Um, it was a good break. I took a little nap. It was it's really cool. Um, so before we go into the next section, I just want to kind of promote the show a little bit. Um, obviously, we're live on Ford's Tech Help Show dot com. You can also um, check me out at Ford's Tech Help dot com at all the social there. Social media, we got Instagram, the Facebook, and the Twitters, all at slash forward slash Ford's Tech Help. And you can check me out at FordsTechHelp.com. And I didn't really go into what my business does. Uh, so I kind of like a technology coach to help people who are kind of getting started with their business or with new technology understand how to use their technology for their home or business and if they need something more advanced like uh, web design or digital marketing I can also do that I do meet on an appointment basis uh, one-on-one so if you're in the local North Florida area Northwest Florida area go to fordstechhelp.com slash appointments and book a, an appointment with this voice in person um, so also please uh like, comment, and subscribe. Get that push notification bell on the YouTubes. Um, what else we got? And then if you got any questions, be sure to do it in the in the donate section on the FordTechHelpShow dot com section. So then uh, all uh, comments over five dollars will be try to be read online. Uh, any or higher comments and questions uh, I'll try to maybe make a companion video if it's like a question about how to do something and everybody kind of uh, supports that question uh, it might be a good video to do later when it, uh, not a live video so we're gonna go into the digital marketing also we can go to patreon there's links to all this on the fordsecupshow.com at the top the Patreon is basically like a, if you want to become like a monthly supporter, you can go to my Patreon page and eventually I'm going to have uh, exclusive things just for pa Patreon supporters. So definitely uh, check that out as well. All right, so we got the Yelps cracking down on things. So next we're going to get into digital marketing. I know everyone's favorite topic. It's actually it's a little little dry and complicated, but um, so WordStream right here it's a really good blog, but they're also a good tool for learn uh, creating pay PPC campaigns. And so basically, PPC is pay per click. So that is Google AdWords, Bing ads. Technically, re goes into the realm of Facebook ads. Uh, display ads on websites like foxnews.com um, and lots of other search engines you can run on but basically uh, a lot of the Google AdWords is where you run a lot of the campaigns and Facebook that's going to be your your larger demographics and of course with Facebook you can run ads on uh, Instagram because they're as I said before they are connected So, five tips for better PPC budgeting. And like I said, that's paid per click ads. Um, so basically, it's kind of talking about like, what is your what is what's your budget? What percentage of that budget should actually be spent on advertising? And obviously, if you have a higher budget, you can do a higher percentage. And I think sticking to a budget is not always good. I think it it's focusing more on what you are trying to get like if you're trying to get 30 people to come to a seminar you want to focus on how much that would cost or versus how much you gain and determine a better budget versus just picking an arbitrary number so that's when you get to forecasting um so a lot of things that people don't think about in a, in a online campaign is when you have a budget, it's not always applied the same. So 
every keyword. So like for me, computer repair, digital marketing is a keyword that I might advertise for, but they're competitive in different states, different towns, and they all have different uh, prices, especially when you're working with Google AdWords and, and Google AdWords is bid based. So it's not necessarily the highest bidder, but it's the best bid with the best quality landing page is going to get shown for those keywords. So that's uh, something you need to take in consideration when making your budget. So you're forecasting how much those keywords are going to cost. You're going to make projection sheets based on um, how long the campaign is probably going to run. Uh, or, and then how... Um, that's, that's basically how I would do it. I mean, the same like month to day performance, past seven day performance. I, I just feel like if you get too granular, you're going to get a little, you're going to really overthink your campaign and its performance and maybe try to tweak it way too much and jeopardize it. And that's kind of what this next section is. Uh, be flexible. It's going to be, it's going to be different all the time. So, so like if you're, if your budget's $500 a month. Um, be flexible, maybe 600 or 400 or it's going to kind of fluctuate. And then you choose the best budget for your account. So on uh, AdWords, there's different ways to run a budget. You can do a daily budget. Um, you can do a lifetime budget if it's more like a seasonal campaign. And you can choose like what time of day they're going to show or when not to show, or what keywords not to show for it. So um, I think being prepared for that ahead of time is very helpful. And just knowing what you can afford, like obviously you want to, I'd want to show up for digital marketing in my area, but if it's too competitive than what I can afford, I need to focus on keywords that I can't afford. And as my business grows, then start to target uh, more uh, costly keywords. And then, so we got here, checking my outline, making sure I'm going in the right order. So uh, this one, not a lot of people are probably going to care about, but if you're a digital marketer or um, I don't really know anybody else that's not like, like a hacker or something, maybe a web developer. Google's planning to next third-party co cookies in Google Chrome by 2022 with their Privacy Sandbox project. And, and basically, it's like creating a, a container. It's sort of a Firefox do, uh, does it for Facebook. That I noticed they create like a container that goes around the website and kind of blocks them from tracking you. And which I, I think, so that means you're only going to be relying on Google cookies to track user experience. Uh, I'm sure there'll probably be more information on this as this comes out. This just came out this week, but basically a cookie, it's not a delicious snack. I mean, it is. And for friends across the pond, it might be called a biscuit, but this is a uh, browser cookies. So you might see like if you're working with me on something and you're uh, website looks one way at your office versus at home you might want to clear your cookies because you or your cash but you want to clear your cookies to basically reload the page to the original state because there's basically they're creating sessions so like you log into facebook and it wants to you wants to stay logged in all the time when you're on the browser it's using a cookie to create a session to keep you logged in. So but I think this is mainly for tracking cookies. So that's like Google Analytics. They're, they're tracking like where you click on the site, what you're doing on the site. Um, but also the privacy sandbox, I believe, will still let you track user experience, but it's going to make it less exposed. 
So you're you're not as uh uh I'm trying to think of the right word. Like so Google doesn't know who you actually are, but they might know that you're a computer user in this area at this time. And it kind of goes with a lot of things that they're dealing with in Europe with uh, the GDPR. If you want to know more about that, uh, I could probably do another talk about it. It doesn't completely apply to America, but it's basically like the European Union and some other places. They have the GDPR, basically where people can say they don't want to be tracked. And you have to like allow them not to be tracked and you send them... Uh, basically download all their data so if like Facebook with the GDPR uh, you just they now let you be able to basically download your whole page with all your photos and delete your account um, so I would say this is a way for them to sort of create a loophole around that so so keep in touch with that and <clears throat> all these next articles are from search engine journal it's a really cool blog that I like, especially if you're trying to learn about search engines. They have a lot of like courses, and if you'll see at the end there's like a little guide. Um, so 10 important 2020 social media trends you need to know. And personally, I don't need to know them. I used to really, I was really into Facebook marketing and social media marketing. That's what I wanted to do, and then I realized I'm an introvert, and it's not really my forte to constantly keep up with these things, and it takes up a lot of my time. But it, there are great tools, and they're great tools for, like I'm using YouTube right now and other platforms to engage with you all. But so here are some new trends besides TikTok and face swap and Russians owning every social media app. Um, so turn one connection plus community, plus experience. So I think it's just, it's a trend that's kind of like a create, instead of like salesy engagement, like more honest engagement with their customers, like really connecting with them and not being as guarded. Because I know when a lot of businesses that I work with, they don't want to be like super open about their business or like if they get a bad review, like we gotta delete that review, but um, but it's not showing your authentic business. And I think when when uh, your business is authentic, they can really trust that your brand actually cares about making their life better, and not just taking their money. And this is a really long article, so and that goes. That's like the authentic influencers. So if you're not familiar with influencers, you probably don't have Instagram or YouTube. But basically an influencer is someone who's paid, who has a large social following, like um, 500,000 followers or a million followers. And basically companies will be like, hey, can you try out my product and and talk about it? And... I think you probably see a lot of uh, Kim Kardashian and her sisters as uh, big influencers. But a lot of times, and I notice with people that I follow, like I see them promote one thing and then they'll promote like a competitor because that competitor is paying them more. And they're not really being authentic about whether they like the product or not. And I think there's, people are noticing that. And so there's going to be a move to being like, hey, this is a promoted post. Maybe I don't really know if I like this, but definitely check this thing out, or I really like it, and just being authentic about it. And my favorite thing, tickety talkity, which basically it's like a TikTok. If you haven't heard of it, it's a it's an app for the kids, um, pretty much for anybody. But basically, you can make short videos, sort of like Vine. But there's no like ranking algorithm. So it's basically like whoever gets, they post it, whoever sees it first, and people really engage with it, they get shown higher. Uh, probably do, uh, so Reddit, the next little section, there's a lot of businesses doing, you'll probably see uh, so and so. I just use Kim Kardashian since that's the last one I did. 
um, is doing an AMA, which is an Ask Me Anything. So they go on Reddit and sort of do kind of like what I'm doing now, but they'll just answer any questions, so Ask Me Anything. So I think people are engaging more with Reddit. I don't really use a lot of Reddit. There's, there's definitely a lot of tech people on there, people more savvy than I, um, and you can learn a lot of things there. But um, from currently for me, that's not an area I go into, but just keeping in touch with trends, but not like, you don't want to like step back where you're like, well, I'm not going to do this TikTok thing until it takes off, but just maybe like creating a plan to for when new technologies c- comes out to assess it and see if it fits your needs. So then you're not like behind the game. And if you're targeting Gen Z people, which you might think I'm Gen Z, but uh, what am I, Gen Y? Because um, I have a baby face. It was a joke. But um, so, so we're going to, TikTok and new things like that or would engage with those younger customers versus uh my notes Facebook's getting really uh not young anymore. So you got some people my age, people who were around when Facebook first came out. And you got everyone's grandmother posting basically chain mail. I don't know if y'all were old enough to remember chain mail, but it was like actual mail that was like if you don't uh share this letter with five thousand people the the world's gonna end and so now every grandmother shares those kind of things on facebook and it's really fun but um so just um knowing your demographic and where they're at when you're uh, targeting your campaigns um so social analytics reimagining that so if you're a business person, you'll probably be like, the first thing you'll notice is how many likes you have or how many shares you have. But I think engagement is more important. Um, so like, I'm not getting a whole lot of likes or whatnot on my Facebook page. But it's allowed me to engage with the people I do work with and to provide them resources and when they know that um, I don't know I think it works what I'm saying kind of works with what I do but now as I'm talking I'm thinking about like uh, like a toy company or something you probably want to get your brand out there a lot but I think that's where you get more into social strategy I think uh, social media is more for engaging with your customers and helping your customers. So re- kind of reimagine what is important to you and for your business goals with social media over just how many followers or how many likes you have or whatnot. So I don't know if I'll be able to get through all these, but use employee advocacy to your advantage. So you might have seen some videos recently recently of like a Domino's employee doing something bad in the store that goes viral. That is the opposite of employee ag- advocacy. So this is like actual employees creating their own content to promote the the companies they they work for. Um so trend 6, stop being so boring. Ugh. So boring. It's not fetch. Uh, I don't really like this one. But I think it's what it's really saying is just basically what all the other trends say is like, stop just flooding people with ads for the sake of advertising. Like, be intentional with your ads and be authentic and talk about how you're going to help your customers. Um, next up, stories 2.0. So uh, everyone loves stories. I not not a big story guy. I got other things to do. But they're really good quick ways to get updates and videos out and people will see it pretty much instantly. Um and 
social media is a discovery engine. Um, I think you see it a lot on Twitter and Instagram because you can search by hashtag. But if you think about it, like YouTube is the number two search engine next to Google, and Google owns YouTube. Um, but I guess it's being intentional with your social media to make it where people are going to want to search for that content. So just being aware as you post things like making it uh, more engaging with people looking for things. So people might be looking for like a how to stream on YouTube review, quick video on IGTV, Instagram TV, or things like that directly on the social platform. And of course, YouTube and video, uh, like a picture is a thousand words, video is like a billion words. Uh, it's pretty straightforward with that. Uh, last one is leveraging user generated content. Um, I guess a lot of businesses might like this, but so user generated content is like, uh, somebody does a social media campaign where you make the coolest video talking about their product and it, and they turn it into a commercial for them and they give you like $500 and they make millions of dollars off of it. I don't really like that. I don't think that goes with the authenticity thing we we're talking about earlier, but I think maybe going forward, there's ways that you can create user gener generated content that is beneficial for both parties. Um, so we got two more articles. So last up, or not last up, ways local paid marketing primer. Here's what you need to know. So basically, I I chose this one because I've noticed it. I live in a tourist area, tourist heavy area. Uh, so there's probably a lot of Uber drivers, um, a lot of people trying to figure out where they're going. And so ways, which is actually owned by Google, pretty much everything's owned by Google, I guess. Like, this website might be owned by Google. Who knows? Um, but Waze is a good app for if you're trying to see if there's police nearby, if a certain area is congested. So people use that app, and they have an advertising platform. And basically, when you get to, like, a stop sign or a turn, an ad will pop up for a location pretty near to where you're driving. So that's pretty geo-targeted and if you're targeting people who are looking for things um, while they're driving that's a good way to do it without like uh, distracting them while they're driving <laughs> and this last article is the SEO strategy guide from search engine journal to beat your competition in 2020 basically you can download it for free you probably have to subscribe or something but just check out this link um, that they have. Just a quick little strategy and overview of like SEO. And if you know what SEO is, it's search engine optimization. So you're, it's kind of a lot of tech stuff is very straightforward sounding. So you're optimizing for a search engine. Uh, you're opt optimizing your website's code and content um, and layout and speed to be search engine friendly on all devices. So we'll just kind of talk about like new trends, um, besides just being mobile friendly and being secure. There's uh, probably gonna be new things or old things that are dying. So just keeping up with what those trends are would be good for your business. So the next segment is books I like. Cause if you know me, I like my books. And Amazon knows I like my books from all these suggestions at the bottom. Should have made this fit the screen better. Uh, so the book I like today is one that kind of, it's a little, it's a little close to home. My sister is actually uh, a conscious leadership coach. I've gone to the conscious leadership training. We've, we use conscious leadership for another business to help with a franchise that we run with our employees. And basically the 15 commitments of conscious leadership, a paradigm for sustainable success is a tool is a 
15 uh, not rules like commitments you're both sides are agreeing to do these things to help eliminate drama increase communication in the workplace so you can actually get work done and not have 15 meetings a day or uh, bring in human resources or those kind of things so uh, definitely check that out the ki- it's uh it's actually on sale right now um the paperback ber- version i actually like uh, the audiobook i've heard some people don't like it as much because they don't talk very uh they talk like this or something um but they're they're great people if you ever want to do their training, they do it in Chicago and I think it's somewhere in California. But Conscious Leadership Group, they got great videos on each commitment as well. They're like little cartoon drawings. They're about five minutes long if you want to learn that way as well. So that's a book I like. I'm not getting any referral money for this. Maybe one day. So it's just a book I like. Uh, so I didn't, did have Tech I Like is going to be the next one. And so let me get a little technical difficulties. <laughs> That's another reason why we're doing this stream to kind of test out what works, what doesn't. And of course, I'm still learning DSLRs, and you think I know everything about technology. I mean, I like learning everything. I'm kind of learning on the fly right now, and my DSLR likes to go to sleep after 30 minutes. So. Turning that back on. And yeah, okay, now we're back. So tech I like. I like this light. If you actually come to come to my office, you know it's not much bigger than a shoebox or a, or a college dorm. So I've kind of created a pretty cool light rig, but I have the Aperture, that's the name of the company, light on top of my DSLR. And it's really small, it's really mobile, it's really bright. There's all these great things you can do for it. Um, let me see if I can get it up for you. I did not have that one ready. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you have to listen to me talking to myself more. And, of course, it's just, uh, hey there, Rachel. How you doing? Let's see how much this thing costs a while i mean yeah so it's it's 45 doll hairs or dollars on on the amazons as you can see it's pretty light rig right now i've got it plugged into power it's also battery powered you can charge it um definitely it's a it's really good it's really really bright and most of all it's cheap if you know me i like tech on the cheap and that's kind of what the show is about is letting people know, like, you don't have to spend all this money to have good tech. Um, you don't need a red camera. You don't need, I mean, I'd like a 4K camera. And there's things you could do, but you don't necessarily need them to get started. So, well, that kind of wraps up the show. I'm going to just do a little plug right here again so please uh always you can check me out for check show.com i'm gonna try to i'm gonna shoot for twice a month right now and then maybe once a week and then as as i get used to this more probably do it more uh frequently but thanks for helping me test it out but always you can subscribe on youtube uh, hit the bell to get notifications um, check out Patreon if you want to become a monthly contributor. And I believe you can still comment on these videos afterwards, and I can bring up any questions in a later show. Um, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at forward slash Ford's Tech Help. Uh, or you can just search for the Ford's Tech Help Show. I believe I renamed everything for that. YouTube's the Ford's Tech Help Show. Um, if anybody's been watching this and Wondering why you, I haven't talked about cars. You probably need to learn a little bit, of, a little bit of grammar. So, Ford's Tech Help Show is about technology and computers for your business and home, and digital marketing. Uh, my name is Ford, hence the name Ford's Tech Help. 
um, not the car company. Uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion with that for some reason. So if you're here to learn about cars, this is not the show. So anyways, take care. I'm signing off.